Well, thank you very much for that introduction, Michael, and uh, <clears throat> thank you and your team for all the support you've given to me over the last year and a half. I really appreciate it. <clears throat> Let me try going this way. First thing I'd like to do is introduce our team. It's a very uh, high-end team. We're, we're myself an entrepreneur in residence. I've launched dozens of biological products over my 30 years in industry and have led a lot of different teams and many different companies, all the way from Fortune 500 companies down to little startups. And I think that's part of why I was recruited as entrepreneur in residence. Uh, my partner and co-founder is Vinod Labsawar. He was here at the medical center previously, but now he's uh, heading up the Cleveland Clinic's cancer nanomedicine program. He too has 30 years of experience, only he's over in the drug discovery, nanomedicine, drug delivery uh, part. He's met many, many publications and patents in this field, and he's also editor-in-chief of Drug Delivery and Translational Research Journal. I'd also like to recognize three of our key advisors and consultants, uh, Karan Moore, who um, is probably in the audience somewhere, yeah, there she is in the back. Thank you for your work. She's a recent PhD from uh, the medical center here and has over 10 years of lab experience, and she's our expert in oxidative stress. Uh, Courtney Keppelman is our expert in um, skin care and cosmetic beauty, uh, sales and marketing executive, and then Paul Munger is our manufacturing and quality systems uh, consultant that's helped us analyze all of our costs and scale-up issues. So what's the problem we're trying to solve? Well, really, there's two very related problems. The one on the left here is one that I see every day when I look in the mirror, and that's what happens to you over the years as you're exposed to the sun. It's called photoaging. And as you can see, <clears throat> over time, the skin becomes very wrinkled, sagging. You lose all the support, and it's a dramatic difference from what you look like when you're younger. Um, so that's one problem. It's kind of a cosmetic issue that we all, most of us, suffer from anyway. Uh, the other problem is a much more serious medical issue, skin cancer. There's several types of skin cancer, many of which are treatable in a doctor's office, but melanoma is a very serious issue. There's over three and a half million cases of skin cancer diagnosed every, every year. It's the most prominent kind of cancer in the U.S., and there's one death every 57 minutes from melanoma. So it's a very serious health issue that we're trying to address. So we're working in both cosmetics and a, a serious medical issue. Before we can solve that problem, though, we need to understand what the mechanism is. And the mechanism is driven by sun exposure. As you all know, there's several kinds of UV radiation coming from the sun. Uh, UVB is uh, pretty mild. It's a uh, short wavelength that doesn't penetrate very far. and It causes sunburns and vitamin D, which is critical, really, for human health. But there's also UVA, which is a much more powerful um, radiation. And what that leads to <clears throat> is formation of free radicals in the skin. And those free radicals are very, very damaging. Usually they're controlled by antioxidant enzymes in the body, but <clears throat> oftentimes those um, enzymes become overwhelmed and leads to a condition known as oxidative stress. And one of the most important uh, actors in this is reactive oxygen species. And those are the issues that we're trying to address with our technology. Now, of course, the current market already knows about all these things. It's well publicized in the uh, press and everything else. Most companies try to address it by extractions from uh, natural things like citrus and uh, seeds, leaves, that kind of thing. And these are definitely <clears throat> uh, antioxidants, but they generally don't penetrate. They're low potency, they're not very stable, <clears throat> and there's no me mechanism for sustained release. So basically, they either get on and washed off, or if they do get on, they're um, metabolized and excreted by the body. So we come up with a real scientific solution, and that's based on nanomedicine. These are patented nanoparticles that we call PRO-NP. In the background here, you see an electron micrograph <clears throat> of a cluster of those uh, nanoparticles. They're extremely small. They're between 80 and 100 nanometers big. Uh, we hold an exclusive license to these uh, through Unimed. They are made with a PLGA copolymer that we'll get into later. So this is real science with uh, peer-reviewed articles. <clears throat> um, and our plan is to pack antioxidants in these nanoparticles and use those as a delivery mechanism to control oxidative stress. And that would be done through partnership with current manufacturers of sunscreen and cosmetics. 
So what are our real advantages? Well, <clears throat> two of them are you can program the release of the, of the compound, and that allows you to do sustained release, so it can be released in the body uh, days to weeks of, of, at a time. It protects the enzyme cargo, and these are naturally occurring enzymes that your body has anyway to control oxidative stress. And what we're doing is augmenting the supply. Uh, they're cell permeable, and they are so small, they are skin permeable, so they get deep into the tissue uh, where this oxidative stress is occurring. Uh, they're very well known uh, to be non-toxic. In fact, PLGA is in FDA-approved products, and it's completely biodegradable by the body, so we don't really believe there'll be any <clears throat> issues with toxicity. So we know the technology works. Let's look at the marketplace. It's a very large and well-established market. We're going to be attacking the very top end of the market where they appreciate new technology and, a and can afford it. Uh, these markets are in the, the $1.6 to $1.8 billion for the sunscreen, and anti-aging skin care is about double that. But the amazing thing is this market is the fastest growing of the skin care market with over 14% compounded annual growth. So we look at the competition. Once again, these are naturally extracted compounds. <clears throat> this one here comes from a, an Arga tree from the, from the uh, Moroccan desert. And it seems like the more uh, exotic it gets, the more people want to buy it. It's just kind of weird. This is truly pseudoscience. And so a lot of these people only put enough in there just to make an antioxidant claim. So there's really nothing behind it that is of, of sound scientific value. There's also uh, vitamins, enzymes, and peptides coming out. These are a little better. However, <clears throat> they're not stabilized, and they don't have a lot of the features that we do. So none of these have the features and benefits that we bring with our Pro-NP <clears throat> nanotechnology. So I believe we really do have an opportunity to be the next big thing in skin care. Um, those of you that know anything about this may have heard of retinol. This is a vitamin A <clears throat> derivative. And it, over the years, has become more and more commonly added to cosmetics. We'd like to simulate that now with our Pro-NP nanoparticles so we can take our customers to that next level of antioxidant protection. So what's our plan to implement that? Well, the first thing we are in is phase one right now. We're doing prototype testing at the Cleveland Clinic. And uh, today, I'm launching our fundraising effort that we'd like to have both of those things completed by the end of this year. Phase two, then, <clears throat> is initial, based on our research group, we'll uh, fund with this money. We'll start our um, development work with a research group, but more importantly, we're working with the uh, drug delivery and nanomedicine group here on campus to develop a pilot plant for nanomedicine right here at UNMC over in the biologic production facility. We expect that to com be completed third quarter of next year. Then we'll be able to work with our customers and the pilot plant to put together the real formulation, <clears throat> start initial scale up by middle of 2015, and then finally we'll be able to um, launch our products in the fourth quarter of 2015. So if we overlay that same timeline with our fundraising efforts, <clears throat> you find out that we need right now about $800,000 to capitalize the company, move off site, <clears throat> and um, hire our first uh, resources. Uh, phase two, we think, will take up to another million dollars. That's what we're working with our, our uh, other customers that, to develop the product, and then maybe a final million dollars to take it to final product launch. This is highly dependent on how much money we can get from those collaborators and companies that we'll be working with. So we think that we'll take two to three million dollars to become fully self-sustaining. These investments will come from private investors like Angels, uh, we'll look for matching funds from the state and also these collaborator funds. So in summary, we have a major technological advance in skin care. Uh, it's a, being launched in a large and very rapidly growing market. We have an experienced and very committed team to execute the plan they've developed. <clears throat> uh, we have a detailed and realistic plan that's embedded in our business plan that we just finished. And this is a platform technology for all different kinds of drug uh, delivery. And so we believe that this is our entrance to the marketplace, but we have a lot, once we're successful here, we have a lot of opportunity for further expansion. Okay, with that, I will end, and I'll answer any questions. What, uh, what keeps you up at night being CEO of this company? <laughs> well, it's about to become money. <laughs>
Um, you know, what we need to do is really prove feasibility in this application. Uh, Vinod has a lot of publications with the antioxidants in the nanoparticles, but he's applied them in other ways. This is our first time to really use them in skin. And so in our prototype testing, he's got <clears throat> artificial skin in tissue culture that responds to UV light, and we're able to monitor the uh, protection of oxidative stress with our nanoparticles in that model. So we're very confident it'll work, but it may take a little longer than we think. I think our risk assessment really shows that it's more risk to time than true um, technical capabilities, I think. Other questions? Does the Cohen P operate synergistically with any other antioxidants and mixed with them? Uh, it could, but I don't think you'd go that direction. I really don't think you would. I think synergistically you'd like to put it with other uh, compounds that do other things, like it would be a nice combination with retinol, for example, because retinol is more of a construction and um, collagen support type of thing. It could be combined with other features, but I don't think you'd put it with another antioxidant, quite honestly. Other questions? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> um, <clears throat> free radicals are uh, very important in a lot of human health. And believe me, there's almost no end to the antioxidant work you could do if we're successful here. We already have a license to a stroke application that Vinod has published. And that, was, that could be our first entrance, but I think it's just too challenging and too expensive. So the strategy is really to be successful here, build this up to the point, sell this company off and use that money to reinvest for more directly medical applications like stroke. There's some in spinal cord injury, diabetes, cancer. He's the head of the <clears throat> Cleveland Clinic Cancer Center. So we know there's a lot of applications downstream from this. Yes? Yes, as a matter of fact, when we, <laughs> when we first uh, had a press release, I got an, um, a phone call from the director of R&D at Estee Lauder. And so we had a nice conversation, and they're definitely tracking our progress, and I think there's interest there. Anytime you say that you're going to be the next generation of antioxidants for skin care, they, their antenna go up immediately. So I think, there, I think there'd be going to be a lot of opportunity for collaborative efforts here. Anything else? All right, thank you.